In this flowchart, I will create an array to store five grades. An array is a structured data type, a little bit different from a simple variable that we've used up to this point. So the first thing that I want to do is to actually declare my array. Do that with the assignment statement. So I'm going to pull in an assignment statement here and then enter the edit box. And there are some, there is an example here of an array declaration. So I'm going to set, I'm going to call my array grades. So I'm going to say grades and then I'm going to put an open brace and I am going to say how many elements are in this array. There are five and then I'm going to close the brackets. One of the things that Raptor allows me to do is to put a zero down here and that means that it will actually initialize all five elements in my array because I have five elements to zero. So I've created an array. Then I also want to declare a variable called count and I'm going to set count equal to one because the first element in my array is in position one so I always want to start with one. Now array processing is very repetitive so I'm going to have loops here to actually input the values and then I'll set up another loop to output the values but it, the same things happen over and over in these loops so the loops end up being very similar so I'm going to drag a loop structure in here and I am going to check for my condition first and that is that count is greater than five so count is my array uh, my loop control variable when count is greater than five, I don't have any more elements in the array and I'm through processing. In this loop, I want to enter the scores or the grades for each student. So I need an input box directly under count here. And I'm going to ask the user enter the grade. And I'm going to store that. This is a little different in grades, the name of my array but I have to tell it what position I'm in and actually what's going to indicate the position is the variable count and count currently is set to one so for the very first element I'm putting grades into the first position in the array now I need to increment count so that I can get to the next position in the array and I can do that with an assignment box by setting count equal to count plus one. It's just a counter. Nothing new there except that as the loop processes, remember that count is going to keep getting one added to it. So it starts at one. So I'm looking at grade sub one. Count plus one would give me two. So the next time I'm looking at grades count, which is two, so I'm in the second position add one to count and it becomes three and I'm looking at the third position in the array and so on. And I'm also going to change the percentage that we're seeing here. It's not all going to fit on the screen. So that would get all of my values into my grade array. I'm going to reset count back to one because I'm going to use another loop to actually print out the values. So I want to set count back to one so that I can start over with the first position in my array and then get another loop control here. And same condition. I actually could have copied the loop that I used and just changed the statements inside. So in this one, of course, I'm still looking to see if count is greater than five. If it is, I'm through because I only have positions for five elements. You're still not going to be able to see. I'm going to have to come down even smaller. Okay, so what I want to do in this loop is to output rather than input. So I want to just say grade, whoops, I want that to be a label, so it has to be in codes. Grade, and then a space, close the quote, plus, I want to indicate what grade I'm actually printing here, so I'm going to use the variable count. And then I'm going to concatenate a blank space for readability and then the variable grades and its position which is stored in count. Now you can't see that at all so let me bring it back up and just scroll down. 
what does that really tell us? On the first pass of the loop where count is 1, it would say grade 1 and then a blank space and then it's telling the computer print out what is stored in the array grades at position 1. I have to increment count, so I need an assignment box here because I have to increment count by 1 in order to get to the next position. So the second time through the loop count is 2, so I'm saying put grade plus the number 2, a blank space, and whatever value is stored in the array, to, array at position 2. And that's the end, actually, of my program. So as I execute, what you will see over here is that I've got going to have some pluses next to uh, grades. And I actually can click on the plus and open that and watch as the values get input into the array. So I'm going to start the execution. And here's grades, so I'm going to open that so you can see. I'm going to enter the first grade, an 88. And it's still going to be in that first loop. Enter the grade. This time we had a 90. Didn't do so well on this test, so 72. Notice over here on the left that my values that are stored in my array are showing as well as the position that they're stored in. So I'm on the fourth grade now. 85. And then the last grade we're going to put in here, a 97. And now we're looping through the output, and it's doing exactly the same thing, except we've got put statements. So when we're all finished processing through the loop the five times from 1 to 5, because remember count is reinitialized here to 1, so it can start over, it gives us all of our grades and it also tells us which grade we're on because I included the variable count in there so it shows each of those grades.